All right, guys, we've got another powerful video for you guys here today. Uh, this, again, this is not a, uh, a book review or anything like that. This is just my overall thoughts and, you know, from life experience and from, you know, all the books that I've read, but mostly from life experience that, you know, this is my opinion. You can choose to agree or disagree. We're going to talk about that the grass is always greener on the other side and what i mean by that is not that it's actually greener on the other side what i mean by that is that we always think that the grass is always greener on the other side we're going to talk about that we're going to talk about if it's an illusion if it's not an illusion is the grass actually greener on the other side okay we're gonna we're gonna get really deep into that first thing I want to talk about is some of my experience uh, with this and you know you guys can decide if you relate to it or not you know for me you know I think almost every human thinks this way at times that the grass is greener on the other side so number one I have written down here is where we live Okay, so for me, I remember I'm living in Toronto now, right? And for me, I'm just like, man, I want to live in a warm climate. I want to live somewhere where it's warm. You know, life in California sounds incredible. And it really does. It sounds incredible to be living in California. And that's something that, you know, I probably will do in the future at some point is, is move to a warmer climate. I don't know if it'll be California or where, but that's just a thought that I have. Another thing, when I was living in Prague, I remember I loved Prague. Right now, I think back to Prague, and I love Prague. But when I was living there, I was, uh, you know, idealizing living in Toronto again. I'm like, oh man, I want to live in Toronto, one of those really high-rise buildings with a gym inside the building, and like it'll be so cool. You know, we're always, you know, thinking about somewhere that we're not. Okay. Uh, somewhere that we're not currently at. Uh, our brains just kind of do this as humans. I don't know why. Um, we always kind of tend to think that way uh, where we're just like, I'm in Toronto, you know, this is cool here. But what about California? Damn, life would be really good there. You know what I mean? Like we're always thinking about something that we're not currently experiencing, I guess let's call it. The second thing I want to talk about is, uh, you know, as humans, we always want something that we don't have or that we feel that we can't have, which is really interesting. We always want something that we either don't have or we feel like we can't have. Why is that? Maybe if there's a challenge aspect to it. Um, I'm not sure why that is, but let's say, for example, you know, uh, a good example is like, let's say like you're on a vacation, right? And this is something that I can, you know, personally tell you from one of my, you know, experiences as well. Let's say you're on a vacation um, and you see a club and the line is, is packed and you're like, God, it looks crazy in there. The music is bumping. Let's say you're somebody that likes clubs because if you don't like clubs, you're going to be like, I can't relate to this. Let's say you're somebody that does like, you know, clubs or some sort of nightlife and you see them like, wow. The music's bumping over there. Everything looks, looks, you know, like a vibe. And let's say you stand on the line, you're standing on the line for like an hour, you get to the front and the, the bouncer's like, you know, you, you can't get in. And you're just like, damn it, I really want to go in that club. And then you walk by another club and there's people outside. Like, hey, come, come in here, come in here. We have free drinks, free drinks. Free drinks for everybody. You might go if the, he says free drinks, but um, let's say let's say he doesn't say free drinks. Let's say you're you're walking by, and he's like, "Come on in, come on in, come on into this club." Like they're trying to force you into this club, and there's nobody in there, and you can easily get into that club, but like it's there's only like let's say like five or ten people in there, and you're just like you feel weird. You're like, why is this person like desperately trying to force me into their club? Like this is weird. Uh, I don't want to go into this club that I can easily get into. I want to go to the club that I can't get into. I want to go into that one. 
right? So that's just one like small kind of example there. Um, yeah, it's just, it's really weird uh, the way it works. And it's like, you know, another example, this is not 100% true because there are people that, you know, will definitely disagree with this. And um, I would even disagree with it to a certain extent, but, but there is, you know, something where, you know, if you ask somebody, what do they value most, let's say? Love or having a significant amount of money, financial freedom, let's say, for example. Now, if you ask like a couple that's that's had love for like 10, 15, 20 years and they're broke, they're probably going to say financial freedom, you know, because I've had this love thing, like I've experienced it for 15, 20 years. I want something that I don't have, which is the money, uh, which is, you know, essentially... The, the grass on the other side, you know? And then if you ask somebody that has a lot of money, like very wealthy, let's say you ask a very wealthy uh, man or woman, let's say like in their 50s, businessman or a businesswoman in their 50s, very lonely, richer than you can imagine. What's more important, love or, or money? They might be like, they might, you know, s some people will say, still say the money, but I think a lot of them will just say love because they don't have it. That's why, right? So we always want something we don't have. It's just like a natural tendency. And some people, um, you know, are gonna disagree with that, right? For some people, they're like, oh no, I, I, I don't feel that way. But we do still have that natural instinct to, to, do, to feel that way about some things, okay? And, um, like for me, I have I have this this struggle all the time. I personally like that's why you know created this video. I have this struggle all the time, where I'm like I I want all the grass. I want the grass that I already have, but I want the grass down there. I want the grass over there. I want the grass up. I want all the grass. Okay, you know, so the grass that I have looks green, but the grass over there looks green too, and over there, and over there, all the grasses looks very green to me. Um, so that's a different kind of issue. I don't know if many people have that kind of challenge. Um, but I think this is a very real thing uh, where people are always thinking the grass is greener on the other side. Uh, in this video, I'm here to tell you that it is an illusion to some extent, uh, for sure. It is an absolute illusion. Um, because the people that have that grass that you're looking at, let's say you're like, oh, I want that grass over there. I want that grass down there. The people that have that grass, that have that you know, that ideal life that you may think is the perfect one, they're still not happy or, or fulfilled just with that either, you know? Um, and, you know, all these things can help, like, all these things can help to a certain extent with your fulfillment. But, like, the mindset that I am uh, disagreeing with here is the grass is greener on the other side and what I have is not enough mindset because that's the most toxic one um, where you're not happy in your current situation because you know there's some other grass that that you think is is better or you want more of um, so that's that's really what I'm getting at uh, for this video is try to break that illusion because it is an illusion okay I promise you uh, there is an illusion there, okay? There is an illusion there because as humans, we naturally want to gravitate towards something that we don't currently have. But we idealize it and, and, and in our head, we make it up to be like this huge thing that would change our whole lives and would definitely make us happy, but it's all bullshit. I'll, I'll give you one story actually before I wrap this video up. I'll give you one story. I remembered when I was 18 years old, I was living in, uh, I moved to Florida with my dad and him and I, we were, you know, um, we just moved there, him and I, and I loved it. It was the, like an incredible experience. Uh, I made new friends there. Uh, I had my first, you know, serious girlfriend over there. Um, yeah, I think I was about 18 ish at the time, maybe 17, 18 when I first moved there and I just loved it. I loved the warm weather. I hate cold weather. I loved that it was warm there. I loved the lifestyle change. Everything was just amazing. Absolutely amazing. Or so I remembered it that way. 
Big difference, by the way. Big, big, big difference, okay? Or so I remembered it that way, okay? Maybe it wasn't that way at all. Your mind sometimes just remembers only the best of the best things and forgets about all the rest, okay? So I remembered it that way. And then my dad uh, told me that we have to move back to New York. Uh, you know, we'll save the reasons for why, but whatever. So I was only in Florida for like a year and a half. So maybe when I was like 18 or 19 or, you know, whatever, 19 and a half, I don't know, I remember the exact age, we moved back to New York. And the whole time I was in New York, three years, I worked at a restaurant called TGIF Fridays, three years. And all I can think about was moving back to Florida. I was like, man, every single day I would remind myself, man, it was so amazing there. If only I could live there, my life would be amazing and I'd be happy. The grass was greener over there. It was literally greener over there. So that's all I can think about. If I could just get myself to Florida, all I have to do is save enough money. I was like, I'm gonna save enough money. I'm gonna buy an apartment in Florida. Apartments are cheap. I can buy one for like 50 or $60,000, just like a smallish apartment. That's what I'll do. I'll just live there and live a beautiful life. It's warm there. Everything's amazing. Oh, what a dream. I had this, I was attached to this for three years, three and a half years, four years even, up until I was like 22 or 23. You know, I would always remind myself, I'm like, oh man, I gotta work hard here in New York because I know when I get back to Florida, it's so warm there, it's so amazing, life is so good. And then so what happened was, me and my cousin ended up moving back to Florida. I sold him on the idea, the vision of life in Florida, how it's so incredible and, oh, we have to experience it. So we get there and it's nothing like I remembered it. Some bits and pieces, yeah, it was still warm, but it was a whole different thing. So what I had done is I had created this, this idealization in my mind where Florida is just the land of the heavens. If only I can get there, everything would change. My life would be amazing. It would be so good. And I got there and immediately, immediately from like the first week or two, it just felt different. But I was like, you know what? Let's, let's continue with it. This is what I wanted. This is exactly what I wanted. I knew it. This is what I wanted. I was like, I, I, I need to stay here. This is, this is it. This is perfect. And it was, and it was decent for, for some portion of it. But the more I stayed, the more I realized this is not the answer at all. This was not anything near what I remembered it to be. I had a whole different experience of it. A whole different experience. Seeing it from a whole different um, view. You know, and it was nothing like I had thought it was going to be. And um, about a year and a half in, you know, we moved back to New York because the both of us, we were just not having a good experience at all. Uh, me and my cousin, we were not having a good experience at all. I'll tell you one more story. One more story. Um, so this is uh, an acquaintance, let's call it, that I had. And... This acquaintance, uh, she's she's a girl like in her mid thirties, uh, I would say right now. So when she was in her in in her late twenties, mid twenties, late twenties, she went to a uh, uh, a town in Spain, and she lived in this town, okay. And she had, and this is a this is a Canadian girl, okay. She's she's a Canadian girl. She went to this town in Spain. And she had the time of her life. She spent like two months there, like on like some sort of like, um, I forget, I, I don't even remember what it was because this is like, you know, someone that I only talked to because she was friends um, with my ex-girlfriend. And so it was like a very far off acquaintance. But I remember every single time we saw this girl, she would talk about her time in Spain and how she is saving up money. She cannot wait to live there. She was gonna move to Spain because she had this like two month 
um, trip there where, where I guess she was like studying for something. So she was studying for something and she, she, she lived in, in, that, in that town in Spain for two months. I forget the town. Um, and then when she came back in her late 20s, she was like, I'm making money. I am moving to Spain. And she would always talk about it. The way she talked about it was just like, she would light up. She was like, my life there will be so good. It will be so good, right? And she would always talk about it like that. And then one day when she was in her, in, in her early 30s, I think like, you know, uh, 32, 33, I don't know. She packed her shit and she moved to Spain. And the only field reports I got from it is what she would tell my ex-girlfriend and, and she would tell me about it. Um, but it was nothing like she remembered. In fact, she had a miserable time. But she thought that grass was so green, just like I thought that grass in Florida was so green because I remembered it in the best ways. You fabricate the memories and you think about all the best times you had there. And and, and, and so she, she went back to Spain. I mean, she lived in Spain. And then for a year, a year later, she moved back to Toronto with a horrific experience. She was like, I hated it. It was nothing like I remember. It was terrible. Um, I, I felt completely left out because uh, Spanish wasn't her first language. She's a Canadian, but she knew how to speak Spanish. They've made her feel like an outsider. None of the experiences were the same. The town wasn't as beautiful as she remembered. None of it, nothing. So she was completely disappointed. Bam, done. But she realized, you know what? The grass was definitely not greener. Um, so that's just something to think about. I just wanted to give you guys a couple of examples there to, to further illustrate exactly what I'm talking about when I say the grass is always greener on the other side. It's what we think. It's an illusion. We believe the grass is greener on that side. But once we go to that side and we experience it, we're like, wow. This grass is greener on the other side. It was all made up in my head. It was all bullshit all along. Complete trash. That's a, a long-winded way of saying appreciate everything that you have in your life now. Appreciate the grass that you have, the grass that you live in, okay? Um, and be present to the moment. Stop thinking about other grass, okay? That's it for this one. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.